Hi, I'm Lane Meyers with Liberty Oil Field Services. I want to give you a brief perspective on the PERFS open calculation that we often conduct in the field as part of a step-down test evaluation. Step-down test has been around for a while. If you want to want to know more about the step-down test itself, there's plenty of SPE papers that you can dive in that I've listed on the, on the lower left of the, of the picture here. Um, so we conduct rate changes to determine how the pressure changes as a function of these rate changes. And with that, we, we are able to determine how much near well bore friction there is and how much perforation friction there is. Often how we use that information is then to determine in case there is high entry friction, what is the cause of that high entry friction and what are the potential fixes that we can evaluate either within the stage or in the next stage that we're going to frack um, to fix that particular problem. The rate step down test is actually uh, celebrating its 25 year anniversary this year in 2019 and its focus has changed significantly over the last couple of years. Early on, step down test was mostly done to assess tortuosity problems or near well bore friction problems that may be uh, you know, sourced from perforations that are not in the preferred fracture plane, fracture reorientation, multiple fracture growth near the well bore, all sources of high near well bore friction. It's a testament to our industry that our focus of the step down test has changed a lot, even given the fact that we now drill horizontal wells that are often not in the preferred fracture plane. But what we often want to focus on is how many perforations or how many perforation clusters are contributing to the ultimate production of a well and how many uh, of these uh, perf clusters are we actually fracking into to create fractures. So could it be that we have two or maybe four active perforation clusters? Can make a big difference in the ultimately, ultimate production of the well. I'm going through two example cases here, two perforation schemes where we pump a frack job at 80, mar 80 barrels a minute. In the first example, we have a very limited number of perforations, 20 only in this particular case, and we may face a total amount of friction at the surface of 4,000 PSI. Now I'm not going to go through the details of all of this, but what you'll see is that uncertainties in well bore friction that emanate from our perforation or from our well bore friction tables translate often not in near well bore friction, but in perforation friction uncertainties. And that often then translates into uncertainty in the perf's open calculation. It's not really an issue if your measured perforation friction is high. The uncertainty in comparison to that high perforation friction number is relatively low, and that results in a relatively narrow band for the perf's open calculation. It can be different though if we have a, already a high perforation stage count, say 100 perforations, if all the other things are the same as the previous example, but the only number that's different is perforation friction, now all of a sudden the amount of perforation friction that's measured is relatively small in comparison to the measurement uncertainty in that perforation friction. That results in a large range in the estimated perforations that are open. In this particular case, anywhere between 29 and an infinite number of perforations. Now that's just simply not a very useful assessment of how many perforations are open. In summary, the step-down test provides the best cheese between the holes. It's a great test that I love, but it also has some, uh, some uh, shortcomings that you need to be aware of when you do it. Near well bore friction is typically not very much affected by erroneous well bore friction estimates, but perforation friction is because well bore friction and perforation friction have a very similar relationship to rate changes. So depending on the completion, perforation friction may be small in comparison to the measurement error. And in those particular cases, determining how many perforations are open is much like cutting the cheese. Simply not something that you want to do in a data van. Now this was Lane Meyers at Liberty Oilfield Services. Thank you for your attention. For more information, visit us at libertyfrag.com.